OK, well, I'm playing the Trump card yet again this week. I know I'll be accused of being boring, but Trump, yeah, yeah. But Trump <laughs> is the story that never stops giving. The latest is that his election promise to replace Obamacare failed to get through the House of Representatives because congressmen from his own party failed to support him. Given that most of them have been in Washington for most of their lives and that President Trump calls Washington the swamp, it's hardly surprising he has enemies in both parties. At the same time, Russiagate, the scandal surrounding the Trump campaign's links with President Putin, gets more and more interesting. Remember Michael Flynn, who for 24 days was Trump's national security advisor before he was sacked for lying about his links with Russia? Well, the story doing the rounds in America is that Mr Flynn has been flipped by the FBI and is now helping them in their investigations into Russiagate, or should we now call it Trumpgate. What Trump is discovering is that running a country is a lot harder than running a company, and that even as president, you can only get things done by persuasion and negotiation, neither of which are Trump qualities. And if he doesn't work it out soon, he'll be the one getting fired. Greg, never mind playing the Trump card. You should have your own memorial Trump <laughs> card. You're not, you're not going to let this go. Um, well, in, in years to come... Yeah. In years to come, well, you'll look back at well, this I, and well, say, you were wrong I, and I was wrong. I'm exactly going to refer, because I'm ready to say that. Where I think you are right, you can't run a country the same way you can run a business. That's absolutely right. And I think we've seen that before, and certainly we've seen that in the US. And I recall when we've discussed this on one of the many occasions you've talked about <laughs> Donald Trump in the past. No, no, because it is a massive story. You've talked about the level of, uh, of investigation and, I think, actual university work you did on Watergate. So yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. You, you know the, all the ins and outs of Watergate. I have two questions for you. Firstly, do you really see Russiagate moving at the same level as Watergate. And secondly, while I agree with you, what are the presidential... I do agree with you. What are the presidential qualities that someone like an Obama or a Bush or whoever you want to say, what are those qualities that Trump doesn't have and can he ever perfect them? Well, Trump's changed politics, hasn't he? Yeah. Trump worked out that you can appeal directly to the... You don't have to go through all these normal mechanisms. You, you, yep. you go and you didn't spend the money that no. the others spent. Yeah. He's changed politics, and that's quite interesting what he's done. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think on... I think he's in terrible trouble on Russia again. Do and you I, see it as a war? You, you genuinely... Yeah, I think it'll take a year, 18 months. But every... I mean, I've got people in America who send me some of the stuff that's dribbling out. And, you know, there's a lot of things... I mean, did you know... For instance, I mean, some of it you wouldn't believe. I mean, for instance, Michael Flynn... Let me just get... While Michael Flynn was working... Was working for the Trump campaign, yeah. he was paid half a billion dollars by the Turkish government yeah. to act as an agent for them. Yeah. And you think... And he's now admitted that. No, he's said, can I just add to that, Greg? And he only just declared that now. Yes. Yeah, didn't declare it at the time, just now. No, <laughs> and, and, and what you're finding is, you know, one, two, three, four of these people who work for Trump are all in terrible trouble. They never expected the degree of investigation that they're now getting. But we are where we are. And I think, I think Flynn... I mean, to just go back to okay. the Watergate analogy, we, yeah, all, please. we all remember... Uh, that one or two people, mainly Dean, turned yeah. and yeah. gave all the evidence against, against Nixon, Nixon, and yeah. that's what killed him. I think Flynn and others are doing that and will do that against Trump. And just coming back to my last point, and then I, I will obviously yield, but the, so I guess, and you've run businesses, you, you, can, you don't need to be collegiate when you run a business. You can just be absolutely dictatorial. Yes. And I guess these are the qualities that we're not seeing in a guy who has to run a country as opposed to a company. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's used to a, a situation where he says, do it, and hopefully people do it. Yeah. He lives in a world where that doesn't happen at no. all. I mean, it doesn't really happen in companies. You've got to persuade the staff to come with you and the rest of the Companies I've worked for. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's yeah, people you work for. I mean, the one thing the boss would say to you is do this and you go away and do something different <laughs> just for the sake of it. I mean, you, and that's why running companies is about persuasion. But running, I mean, you know, he, 
who would have thought that he couldn't get his Obamacare Unbelievable. legislation? It's just to reject Obamacare. Yeah. Didn't you touch on that in your interview, though? The, the reason probably that happened is because, remember, during the election campaign, he said he was going to drain the swamp. The swamp is full of politicians that could have helped him get his yes. policy through. And now he's alienated everybody. He doesn't have any friends at yeah. all there, yeah, which is why his policy... I, listen, I, I, I think I got it wrong with Flynn. I said he got half a billion. Half he million. got half a million. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's still half, quite yeah. a lot. Well, not I mean, in your terms. Nah. They're very similar, of course, <laughs> Mr Dyke. Can yeah. I just add a little bit as well? So, like you, Greg, I am obsessed with Russiagate because I just think it's... I think it's probably is going to be worse than Watergate, actually. The scary thing that's just come out now is that Jared Kushner, his son-in-law, who's now getting his own department in the White House, met with a Russian banker during the campaign. Oh. Yeah, and what's really scary about that is obviously where sanctions are concerned. When sanctions are in place, it's not just about the country. Also, institutions and individuals are listed. So who knows if this banker is one of those people that has sanctions against them? This is just going to be yes. a disaster. Um, well, the other one is that there's 19% of Vosnev. <laughs> there's 19% yeah, of Vosnev. Yeah, yeah. 19% of Vosnev seems to have disappeared. Disappeared. So who's got it? Yeah. Where did it go? And now, you, you can imagine it. I mean, if you were, you've been a journalist all your life. You know what it's like. Once you get into one of these, yeah. you're Never just going to keep going yeah. on. On and on, on and on. on. This is, I mean, everybody is chasing, the chasing yeah. these stories, and, and stories. And actually, I suspect Trump's lot I never saw this coming. No. Just and actually, keep... he never thought that putting themselves into the public arena led to this degree of scrutiny. scrutiny. Just to keep lawyers happy on both sides of the Atlantic, I need to just say that these, of course, <laughs> ongoing issues, no charges have been laid, and certainly there have been no convictions whatsoever. Let's no. make that point. I so, yield the floor. Sure. Yeah. So, to your point about bringing it back to the company um, piece, so he is doing what he said he would do in the campaign, didn't he? He promised that he was going to run this like a country, uh, sorry, like a company, Business. under budget, ahead of schedule, and it's that was his strategy, and I think he's doing what he said he would but I agree with you it doesn't work and I think the reason it doesn't work is because he's used to an empire of which he is the the top of and it's his yep. word that goes and I think you saw it as early as like do you remember the travel ban and I think he <laughs> just has these ideas he has these kind of minions if you like to go and execute but I think what he's yep. lacking is he doesn't understand or is not you know he's not used to the he doesn't understand all of the ins and outs so in your company you know it you know your supply chains you know your customer and you really yep. can kind of can gauge the impacts of your decisions. And what he's got now is he's making key decisions very quickly in a business fashion without truly understanding the impact and the ramifications yeah. of that. And that's where it's falling apart. Well, there's, another, there's another promise. I mean, we'll have a look at a clip. There's another promise he made during the election, which is quite interesting. You know what? And I love golf. But if I were in the White House, I don't think I'd ever see Turnberry again. I don't think I'd ever see Doral again. I own Doral in Miami. I don't think I'd ever see many of the places that I have. I don't ever think I'd see anything. I just want to stay in the White House and work my ass off, make great deals, right? Who's going to leave? Who's going to leave? Now, take a look at this. Group. Now, this is... That, <laughs> ignore the guy downstairs. We don't know who he is. But who is that wandering upstairs? That's the president. Now, he said he'd gone to this golf club to work, yeah. right? He's in full golf gear. <laughs> yeah. Full golf gear. And, you see, I don't mind him playing golf. I, th I think people should be entitled to have some time and relax. And the rest of it. But you can't attack Obama for playing golf every week. And then he's been playing once, sometimes twice a week since he became president. And it costs the taxpayer $3 million well, every well, time he goes to his <laughs> own golf club <laughs> to play golf. Didn't it cost when Obama went too? <laughs> yeah, but Obama was going both. ten times a year. This guy's no. going every week. No, no, week. Obama played, he's gone Obama played, played golf, quite a lot. No, but he's been six <laughs> times <laughs> since he's been in office. Listen, if you go back to Eisenhower <laughs> and that generation, that's all they did. It's come down to how many times they play golf. It's a load of golf balls. It's a load of golf balls. I was going to say, we keep expecting him into, to morph into the kind of a president we, oh, we know too, yeah. and we can understand. And we've just got to accept it's actually never, ever going to happen. No. You know, he's not, a, he's not a politician. He's not bound by the normal conventions of politicians. You know, when he gets caught out on a lie, like, normal politicians have to be accountable. He doesn't care. Mm. But he, he, needs just, to evolve he just does his a style. tweet. He needs to evolve his style if he wants to be more successful, I think. <laughs> Yeah. It's whether he can, though, in reality. I, mm. I, I think I he's think too he long in the tooth to be polite about yeah. it, well, to it, ever change. I wonder really... if he'll ever grow to... Actually, the interesting question is, will he ever grow to dislike it? Will he actually find that he can't oh, do anything? I think, right. I think he already does. Yeah. Does he look like a well, person who's having fun? Well, his no. wife clearly doesn't like yeah. it, but, I mean... <laughs> she doesn't like him, too. <laughs>